They just broke, nothing but pieces in my hand. Hi, I'm Joe, and welcome to Motor City Boat Works. Let's get to work. Welcome back to the works. For several weeks now, I've been working through various steps for various projects involved in rebuilding the head in my Alban 27. I've enlarged the head to something better than it once was. It now has a standalone shower and is almost 20 square feet. I've talked about my plan for the bathroom, what my requirements are, and I've begun working on the shower panels, the shower pan, and we've even talked about some of the components and the actual plumbing system. If you're new to the channel, be sure to check out the Build a Bathroom playlist that I have. It tells you everything you need to know to bring you up to speed. In the last episode, we talked about some of the components and how the plumbing system is actually put together. And it was from that discussion that I came to realize well, there might be some more problems down the line. This is gonna go on like that. This will all go down inside here. And on the other side, down in the bilge, a three quarter or a one inch hose will attach to this uh, with a hose clamp. And in that way, now we've got drain going from our shower. Now this brings up a really good point. This is an important point, which is say you go from here one inch and you're gonna go maybe to a diaphragm pump, which will be the sump and drain out your shower. You'll go onward, maybe through a strainer, whatever, and you'll, but you'll eventually end up at a through hole going out of the boat. And what you gotta make sure is that the through hole that's going out of the boat is essentially the same size as the barb that's on the end of your drain, whether it be at the sink or be at the shower. So for example, on the Alban 27, the through holes where the sinks and the shower will drain those right now, well, they're half inch through holes. And what that means is you're gonna have a problem going from one inch or three quarter, somehow down to half inch through holes. They should all be the same size. You don't wanna to have to keep putting in reducers upon reducers and reducers. And of course, they don't make a reducer that goes from one and a half inches down to a half inch. They only make a one and a half to a one and a quarter and a one and a quarter to a three quarter or a one inch. I hope that makes sense. What this means is, is on the boat, at the through holes that drain for the sink and for the shower, well, they're too small. And I installed them a number of years ago. I just replaced what was there with the same size, like and to like, but I failed to think ahead into how all of these components would fit together all the way back to the drain at the showers or at the sink. And my sinks are at this standard three quarter or one inch hose. So now my through hole needs to be three quarter or one inch. I've got to decide which one. Now I've determined, I feel like three quarter is the right size, but I only have one inch here. I'm waiting on the three quarters to come. All this means I have to pull out at least two through hole fittings where the sinks and stuff will drain and I've got to change it to a different size through hole so that it matches all the way back down the line to the drains. This is something that if you're building a boat, you want to think ahead. You want to make sure that all of your plumbing components match together both by thread and size and uh, you check the dimensions to make sure you have clearances so you know, do I need an angle here or can I go with a straight barb? If you're enjoying this episode, would you do me a favor? Hit the like button and maybe leave a comment below. I invite you to subscribe. And if you really wanna help out the channel, well, please consider leaving a donation on Patreon. This channel would not be possible without your support. So it turns out I've got to remove the undersized through holes and clean everything up and then reinstall new ones, but I'm not looking forward to this because the through holes were installed with some heavy duty marine sealant, some PL Marine or 3M 4200 or 5200. And anytime you try and remove through hole fittings, it can be a real hassle. Sometimes they break, sometimes they damage the fiberglass, it really can turn into a nightmare.
Let's talk about choosing above the waterline through hole fittings. Through hole fittings for below the waterline are typically made of bronze. If they're made of plastic, they need to be ABYC approved and they need to be made of Marillon. Brass through hole fittings, no matter where they come from, are not appropriate on a boat. Above the waterline fittings are often made of plastic. It's a cost saving measure. I'm inside the boat, I'm in the head, and what I want to show you is kind of an important lesson, which is you have an old boat, you're going to replace the through hole fittings, especially the above the waterline through hole fittings. These are for the sink, and maybe the shower, maybe the drain for the galley or something like that. And you want to swap those out, maybe improve the plastic fittings that are on there, which is something that I did a number of years ago. I replaced all of the plastic fittings, the above the waterline through hole fittings to a better quality plastic, something the original ones maybe were nylon, which is really not what they should be. And I replaced them and upgraded them to something a little bit better, like a polypro type of material. And I went ahead and I reinstalled them, put them in with the marine sealant, all of that jazz. But now here we are, it's time to work on the head, we're working on the galley, we're working on the various sinks and the shower drain. And we come to realize that the fittings that go from the sinks to the through holes, well, they're not the same size. And this is not something that you want to kind of have a discrepancy between. You want to go from three quarter to three quarter, one inch to one inch. You don't want to be going from one inch down to five eighth, which is what I've got right now. So take a look here, I'm going to show you. So this is, uh, we're in the head, this is uh, looking down on a through hole fitting in the head inside the cabinet. It's right here, you can see it right here. I've got a big old wrench on here. It's a one inch nut that's on there, so it's a very large wrench. And I'm going to be taking this through hole fitting off. I'm also going to do the one in the galley. And what I hope to be able to do is to get them off easily, I've got larger proper size through holes that will match the hose barbs that come off of the the sinks and stuff later on when I put those in. Now everything's got to match. I wish this is something I had known about beforehand, but it just didn't, I just never thought of it. And uh, we're going to work to get this off of here. It seems to be coming loose, so we'll just keep doing it. We don't want to strip it. Well, this is going to be a challenge here. Might need something to break this free. I wanted to show this because sooner or later every boat restorer or boat builder is going to have to mess with their through holes and it can be a lot of work. That's not the way to do it. <laughs> but <laughs> luckily they're kind of disposable. That thing shattered <laughs> from squeezing on it. I don't know what we're gonna do now. Let's see if I can hammer this thing out. This is it right here. I can see it. Okay. Got it. Check this out. There we go. You can see it. There. 
That's it, there you go. They just broke, nothing but pieces in my hand. I don't know if this is focusing or not. Let's see what it says here, close. All right, it's kind of hard to see, but basically it says half inch. It's a half inch thick right there. And that's a great sign because that's, uh, that's solid fiberglass right there. If you can see that, this right here is all solid laminate that is really good half inch thick so that's your 12 millimeters right there that's what we'd like to see what i want to tell you is that maybe like me when i first started out i didn't have access to a lot of different tools and when it came time to change out these plastic through hole fittings well i reached for my trusty adjustable crescent wrench right you might be tempted to use this to try and remove the plastic through hole fittings from your boat but I'm going to tell you it's a bad idea because what's ultimately going to happen is you're going to end up buggering up the nut that goes on the end there and then you're really going to have a bear of a time trying to get this thing off. Ask me how I know. What you want to do is you want to use a proper size wrench, preferably a closed box wrench that fits on the nut exactly right. Here we have, this is a three quarter inch, this is a three quarter inch uh, plastic through hole course it doesn't fit right so if we were putting in a new through hole fitting what we would do is uh, get a hole saw maybe drill a hole in the hull boom we get it the proper size in this case I'm not sure what size that hole is probably three quarter we got to go up to one inch it's got to be one inch in order for this through hole to mount properly so how do we enlarge that hole well you can't use a hole saw because there's nothing to center the the hole saw on so what we've got to do is uh, maybe trace a little circle and we'll use the snake to slightly enlarge the hole. And in that way, we should be able to get a nice snug fit on the new fitting. I'm using a 60 grit sandpaper drum hooked up to the flexible shaft that makes up the snake. You gotta watch how much material you're taking off because the grinding process goes really fast. If your hull is less than three quarters of an inch thick, at any given point where there's a through hole, you wanna make sure that there's some type of a backing block, something that will reinforce where the through hole fitting comes through the hull. Now, I didn't do this when I originally reinstalled the fittings, and now seems like a good time to go ahead and make sure that I have some backing blocks. Motor City Boat Works has no sponsors, and I get no compensation from any of the companies or the products that I sometimes mention on my channel. However, in the description, I sometimes put links for Amazon where you can find some of the tools or items that I'm using in the restoration of my boat. Amazon does provide a small commission if you use those links. And I wanna tell you, if you go to those links on the episode description, click on one of those links, it'll open up the browser. Even if you don't buy the products that I use in the show, anything you buy from within that link, well, Amazon pays a commission. It's a great way to support the channel. It doesn't cost you anything and it doesn't matter what you're buying. I frequently get questions about what type of material to use for a backing block for a through hole. I see a lot of people online recommending G10. It's like a dense fiberglass product and I gotta say this is just overkill. Uh. This product is very, very expensive, especially in half inch thick sizes. It's really not necessary. Some people ask about using PVC foam board, and as I've said before, PVC foam board is not really for structural components. In half inch dimensions, I feel like it can be a little bit too flexible. Uh. It's not something that you want to use. A lot of people ask about using HDPE or King Starboard, and while this might seem like a really great uh, material to use as a backing block, it's not a good idea because King Starboard does not accept glue or adhesives very well. It's virtually impossible to actually make a watertight seal using any sort of sealant. So the solution is to use good old fashioned marine plywood that's coated in epoxy resin so it's waterproof, or I like to use half inch thick kusa board, but on one side I've put 
at least one layer of about seven ounce fiberglass. It makes it super rigid and it's non-compressible. Whatever you use for your through hole backing block, you wanna make sure that it's not going to deteriorate or rot over time if it ever gets wet. Installing the backing block is pretty straightforward. I'll use a hole saw to drill the hole and then I'll line everything up and epoxy it into place. Be sure to tape the threads on the through hole fitting so you don't get any epoxy on it. We're just using the through hole at this point to kind of line everything up. We'll pull it out and reinstall it later on using proper marine sealant. I'm using West System epoxy thickened to about peanut butter consistency. This is what I'll use to attach the backing block to the hull of the boat. This all looks great. Might have to sand it just a little bit, but we'll coat this with paint and we'll be ready to go. Installing an above water through hole fitting is a pretty easy job, but there's a couple things you need to know. It's a little cold in the shop this morning, so you may not be able to hear me, the heater's running. But this morning, I'm hoping we're gonna have a moment of completion and I'm gonna be installing the through hole fittings uh, back into the boat for the galley and for the head sink. And uh, so this morning we've got some marine sealant that we're gonna be using and uh, put a little bead on here, get it inside the hull, and then I'll be tightening up the nut on the back side. I've got the backing blocks installed, they're all painted, everything should look good, and hopefully we'll get this done today. All right, we've cleaned the surface real well on the through hole fittings. We got our marine sealant here. We're gonna be using PL Marine, which is a great substitute for 3M4200. I, I like using it, it's available at the big box store and it's relatively inexpensive, good substitute. It's a nice tight fit. Clean that up afterwards. I'll show you this little tip here. When you're working on your through hole fitting, especially these plastic ones, they will have a little slot in the mushroom end of it. And uh, the idea is someone holds it from the outside while you tighten the nut on the inside. And the question is, well, how do you hold it from the outside? And you put something inside that slot. Well, what do you use? And what I found surprisingly over the years is the metal from a carpenter square here. It works real well, kind of hold these things in place. They, it fits perfectly. All right, it's looking good. All right, let me get the wrench. Now I know I said don't use the adjustable crescent wrench, but the problem is is that when you size up to a oh, three-quarter inch fitting, well, the nut goes up exponentially, it's, and I no longer have a big enough wrench for it. So I gotta use the adjustable wrench, it's just terrible. Just be very careful, and hopefully... So we tighten this just finger tight, I think that's good, right there. We'll touch this up with some paint. We'll uh, come back, we'll touch up the bootstripe. We gotta do it anyway. We're gonna touch up the hull anyway. That's not a big deal. We just want all this to be clean. There you go. What do you think? I think it looks good. I think it looks really good. Excellent. All right, another job done. Well, there you go. It's a simple job, but it's one that's got to be done correctly. And it, you definitely need to make sure that your through holes are all matching and aligned with the plumbing that you're going to be putting into your head or your galley.
Next episode, I'm going to be down in the bilge of the boat working on access to the underside of the shower panel. I've come to realize that I need to be able to access the fittings in case something goes wrong. And right now, there's no access to anything that's under the shower floor. We'll deal with that next time. If you enjoyed this episode, please hit the like button and be sure to subscribe. Thanks for stopping by. Stay motivated. If you like these videos, please hit the subscribe button. These videos would not be possible without your support.